Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health uh, meeting here in the December 13th, 2017, 6 p.m. here in the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Um, the first thing I want to say is that we are being recorded, in case there's any issues with that. And um, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh my gosh. Makes me feel like I'm in school again. <laughs> um, we have minutes of December 6th. Have you had a chance to look at them? I did. Um, but what I just a couple things. Yes. That was a mistake. Okay, that's what I saw. And um, that was a mistake. Yeah. So we're just eliminating that and okay. correcting that. All right, great. Then uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes of December 6, 2017, with the corrections as noted. Um, I second that. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Selectman's comments. I just want to say it was a lovely, lovely um, tree lighting ceremony down here, here at the Town Common on Sunday. and. I just want to say thank you so very much to the South Deerfield Women's Club and C3, which is the Creative Community Central Group. Um, they did a lovely job. They had um, hot cocoa and cookies, and we had music and wonderful people singing, and it was just, it was just so uplifting. So anyway, um, it turns out that um, we didn't have enough lights for the couple big trees. So um, I would like to make a motion to um, have a town common lighting gift account so that people could contribute to getting lights there for next year. That sounds like a good. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And can you just pass this to Key? I'm sure. made the first donation to the count because oh, I, was, cool. I was just so impressed with. There you go. Um, Thank you. With every, it was just, it was just very nice, and it, and it, it's so cheerful to drive by, and so I want to thank everybody who made it such a wonderful thing. And, thank you. Um, it was a little chilly, but it was great. <laughs> Did you have any other things? I do not at this time. Um, Board of Health, just wash your hands. It's flu season, and we'll hopefully um, figure out what we can do to keep people healthy in town at some point. Um, Key, do you have any town administrator report for us? I do not. Okay. Quick. Um, at 6.15, we have Eversource. Uh, so we can jump down to the Sunderland Parade Participation Agreement. We have to um, tell them what we're going to do. Um, so by the end of the month. So I didn't know if you wanted to, we could put it off till the 27th, but we still have to figure out what you want to do. Um, I know I, um, we kind of made you in charge of it. <laughs> I fell off of that. And I, and I saw some of the, the restrictions, so. Um, so what did you I, I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't really have any idea. I mean, we could do something as simple as, as riding in a cruiser. I don't think you want to ride on the motorcycle. Um, no, not really. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, you know, we could have a motorcycle escort, though. It, that it, might be kind of nice. We could make a float. I just know that I can't do it all. I don't know if we know. can get people involved enough to do that. Uh, but um, well, it's it's easy to come up with ideas. It's sometimes difficult to implement them. Yeah. Um, how about uh, we put it off till the twenty seventh because we have to respond by the thirty first. Um, and I, Key, could you just call Trevor <coughs> and ask him since he's sitting home and he's maybe he's watching this right now. Um, he could uh, come up with some ideas of what what we want to do. Um, we maybe could reach out to some of the farmers in the area who might want to, uh, you know, put something together. Uh, and this is going to be in June, is it? Yeah, yeah, June. Um, so, I forget the day. It's, maybe uh, if June. a couple of them got together and, and did a little display of what they particularly grow or something, and we put it on a hay wagon and pulled that or something. I 
Um, I think it's that weekend, the 16th, 17th. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I think it is, because I think it was just before I had gone to a risk communication workshop last Thursday that was excellent. And I um, actually reached out to Adam Sokolowski, um, and he and I have set up a meeting in January to do some pre-messaging for some events like um, flooding or trained railmen or something like that. So you have you have it worked out by their I see. little workshop. Yep. Anyway, um, but at the risk communication workshop was um, Joe Judd from Shelburne, and he invited us to the Shelburne's 250th on June 22nd. He wanted us to someone to speak. So um, I said, of course, we would be happy to participate. And um, <laughs> now I have to figure out what we're going to do there, too. So there's two things in June we're going to participate with. And, um, but he's more or less looking for something um, that's related to Shelburne breaking off of Deerfield and, and um, that whole process. So I have to go back to the... Um, I didn't even know that. Yeah, well, Shelburne, yes, Shelburne used to be part of Deerfield, or was originally part of Deerfield, and they broke off. And so he wants uh, us to have a talk about that and some interesting stuff. So I've got to do some research. And um, hmm, anyway. It's very interesting. So that's June 22nd. Okay. And he's free dinner, and, you know. I said, okay. Um, so there was that celebration. And um, what we're going to do, I don't want to do it in the year 2017. I want to wait until January. But our first meeting in January, which will be January 10th, we'll put on the agenda to start our own um, birthday committee. Would that be okay? Sure. So we'll establish our 350th birthday committee and mail out all our invitations to the surrounding what, communities to participate. What year is it going to be? Nate? 2023. 2023. Yes. Um, but it takes a long time to, and I and I thought it would be nice to have some, 2022 would be the year we would be celebrating and work up to the birthday year. Sure. So I wanted the committee to be participatory. So um, anyway, hmm. um, we'll, get, we'll get Trevor to work with, you and get some ideas. How's that? I, I'll assign yeah. Trevor to <laughs> be creative. Okay. Um, all right. Um, we don't really want to start the budget just yet. Um, how about the appointment for the police department? Okay. Full time officer? Sure. Or Sahati or somewhere. <clears throat> It's uh, okay. So do you want to just make a motion? Uh, the motion would be uh, Christopher at full time starting December 23rd at a rate of 2238. I have that paper. Okay, I make an appointment, excuse me, I make a motion to appoint Christopher uh, Savinsky as a full-time police officer effective December 23rd, 2017, at a starting rate of $22.38 an hour in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement. I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, please make that unanimous. Uh, we'll sign that. I'm 
just give her the whole folder. Uh, well, you have to hold out the call handy stuff. Okay. Um, we have to wait another minute, <laughs> but you could come up and introduce yourself. Are you here for, um, Me? yes. Well, I'm here for the telephone poll. Yes. River Road. Yep. You can come up and introduce yourself. Okay. We really can't start the hearing for another minute or two. Okay. And you are? Carolyn Ness. Carolyn Ness. I'm Kip Tomasa. Please meet me, Kip. I know me. Please your office. Okay. Right here. Mm -hmm. Well, have a seat, and um, we should be able to start in a minute. We're really ahead of ourselves this today. Do we have more information on the budget or not, really? Not additional. Okay. Um, That's the only other thing. I uh, I did have a phone call with Lisa Mead about um, marijuana stuff that's moving ahead. Good. Um, there is no. We're, we'll put on executive session for December 27th. Um, but she has to get back to us for more with more information. There, we're supposed to have at the end of the month. State is supposed to come out with guidelines. There's not much we can do until then. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to uh, like to speak with her as well um, in relations to the uh, request to purchase or lease the land up by Warner's Tower. Oh, okay. Um, as far as you know, the lot not being conforming and what it might, what our bylaws might allow or not allow them to do and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep um, it brief. Yeah, we want to. We probably want to lease it, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have her number? Um, I can get it. Um, um, I just have it. Here it is. Mm. Thank From you. today. So you can just call her. Um, okay, it's 615. We will open the hearing for... Um, the poll on um, pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 166, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on December 13th, 2017 at 615 p.m. in the town offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on the petition of Eversource for permission to install one fully owned pole to be set approximately 2,000 feet south of Keith Cross Road intersection and 15 feet from the road center line for the purpose of providing power to a new home at 411 River Road in Deerfield. Okay, we'll open the hearing and we'll have a discussion. Would you, would you have any questions or would you like to mm -hmm. present your case? Sure would be nice to have electricity. I'm actually the rep from Eversource that designed Oh, the I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the gentleman that we're working with um, to get that project moving. Okay. Uh, my name is Matthew Fuller. Okay. Uh, I am the rep from Eversource and is here to obtain approval for this poll on River Road to uh, energize this new home. Okay. Um, do we have any public comments? Did you have Electricity a is a good thing. Okay. <laughs> um, did you have any questions, Kip? No. I... Um, we have the map. Um, we don't foresee any issues that I can see. Um, and we have no, no one here um, that has any questions. So um, I will. Uh, oh. Okay. I, I move to grant the petition of Eversource to install one poll well, as I requested? Just, well, oh. first I have to close the hearing. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So I will close the hearing sure. now, and now you can do the okay. motion. I move to grant the petition of Eversource to install one poll as requested. And I second that motion. Is there further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Um, Thank you very much. We will now sign it, and you will have permission to put the poll in. Excellent. Thank you very much. After You're the welcome. fact, I, now does Eversource only install some of the polls in town, and the telephone company installs the rest? Verizon is custodian of all polls in the town that they have facilities attached to. Um, in this particular case, because they're not going to attach to this poll, mm -hmm. they rejected the set, so it becomes ours to petition to do the work and, and build and maintain. So okay. Oh, okay. such a time, if they decide to attach to this poll, then they would assume ownership of it, but for the current time being, it is gonna be ours top Great. to bottom. Okay, I, I guess you. that's why I was a little confused why, I mean, we normally have Verizon here, so. Yep. Okay. Very few cases. You may see us from time to time, but. Okay. Thank you very much for the time this evening. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry for the mix-up, but appreciate you both coming in. Um, okay. Um, we are going to go on to the budget, but Bruce, is there anything you wanted to say? I had questions if, uh, like, possibly... Sure. Sure. Oh, you know what, um, Kip? I just wanted to pass on to Kip um, when I had a, a long, it was a long phone call with you, Bruce, the other day. But <laughs> I find um, it hard to believe. <laughs> even long by my standard. Um, um, Bruce brought up something that was before I forget about it. I wanted to pass on to you is that um, the water district rates are not set on exact days. And, and it was very interesting. Bruce went back to, uh, to his old bills and they fluctuated. What was it, 142 or 144 uh, 161 days? 161 to 210 days. So they're not six month periods. Uh -huh. So that affects how we set our um, sewer rates. So you're going to see, so I, I, I would anticipate that you're going to see this kind of flow with your revenue source. So if you're trying to take it off, a, you know, set the rates on a short period of revenue, such as a year, and try to go by that, it's probably not going to work because, as I said, you know, uh, this last one, I think, was 161 days, which is approximately But didn't you even short. went down to one of the bills was 141, oh, 149, or there was on one, uh, there was might one. Might possibly have been. Anyway, you know. went back it, quite a few years. Between the high and the low, you can have over a month period of time, uh, difference. Hmm. And so, you know, when you see the bill from the town for the sewer, it's always written as a six-month period. But since it's based on the water, you go by the, the water bill has the actual read date. So if you go by that, you'll, you'll find there's, you know, you can lose two weeks and gain two weeks on the same year period. So your revenue source is going to rise up and fall down. And a good example would be like this one was, uh, the one we just got would have been uh, the summer rate, which is 25% over last winter. Uh, at maximum, you know, for residential users. Now, uh, what's going to happen is, depending on when they read the next one, if they read the next short winter one, well, the next summer's rates are going to be artificially low. If they read, if it extends out being a, you know, a 200-day period, then the winter rates are going to be fine water usage, but then your next summer rates at 125% of that is going to be ballooned up over the norm. So you're riding this wave up and down, and I don't know what the answer is, but you know, it's just something that. Well, I could talk with the water department to see if uh, one of the dates, if the spring one, say, was always done, I'm just going to say the first week of May, and the fall one, I, I understand that they might have a month one way or the other, but it isn't like anybody's being charged more or less. It's just taking a longer or shorter period of time to get that. Well, right. It, no, they're not being charged more or less. Well, they are in the art because you're, you're basing the summer bill on a maximum of 25% of your winter bill. So if that's a short period of time, then... Oh, I don't, what, what do you mean the 25? I thought that was a reduction of 25% of the winter bill. Is that not correct? No. Your summer bill is a maximum of 25% over your winter okay. bill. Okay, right. I get it. Okay, well, I guess over depending the, on which yeah. way you're looking at it. Right. You know, so, so that's what I say. If you end up with a short reading in the winter, yeah. then you're really then the town is being shortchanged in the summer by using the 25 percent, uh, 25 percent, or by the same token, if you if it happens to be a long period for the winter bill, 
then the uh, uh, sewer users more. paying a high bill for the summer for things they didn't use. And I don't know what the answer is, uh, other than you know, if, if uh, there was some way that the water department could uh, try to stabilize your uh, reading times. So I just didn't want to forget that, because that actually that has impact. So, so. And I was not aware of that. So thank you, Bruce. But, hmm. Anyway. So go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. We're, we're, we're actually pretty much done because there's no new budgets. And uh, Trevor's surprise, surprise. hopefully, hopefully, well, the budgets are due on the 22nd. And hopefully yeah. Trevor will be here for the 27th and we can finish up. And he, he is definitely? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think he's doing very well. I talked to him the other morning. He said, yeah, he's doing extremely well. So I'm ho we're hopeful that he will be here on the 27th. Yeah. So anyway, I a couple of questions, as you know, on the bylaws. Uh, and, you know, we're moving along and we've got some good people on here. Uh, very meticulous, uh, the whole group. But uh, a couple of things that one of them we've gone by already. And I guess there again, I've been thumbing through outside of the bylaws to try to see where there's discrepancies. And one of the things I came across was all your permits. And because all your authorities for excavations and everything else, and the bylaws uh, lies with the select board. And, but your permits are all being signed by the highway department or the building inspector. Um, so. Some of them we have delegated like the beaver removal permits we have no i'm talking about excavation uh, oh, trench okay. permits stuff like that we um again we delegated the trench permits but i'm i'm not really sure what you're talking about on excavations what does it say well it, well for example um uh and i i really don't care it's just that the bylaw should match the situation oh right it, 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 vice versa Okay. Does it say, um, I'm surprised it doesn't say that we delegated the trench permits to... No, there is nothing in there to allow for an appoint, appointee, and that's really? basically all that it would take. Okay, um, well, we want to make sure we do that because... Um, and that way, I kind of figured that was going to be your answer, but... Uh, well, it's not, um, if someone ha is in business, I mean, we want still review, I guess we want the ability to review certain situations, but... A, a normal person should be able to come in and have a trench permit or a beaver removal permit or whatever um, done without waiting for every two weeks. Well, it, well, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll just pick up. I mean, it's not. It doesn't up. facilitate business. All right, highway ob highway obstruction and excavation. And this, in all reality, if you read it, it actually covers trenches too, even though you have a separate trench bylaw as well. Uh, the selectmen. Uh, may grant licenses in writing it to, uh, for such ex excavation of, of the same for streets. Don't mind me, I just had an eye exam today, so everything is oh. starry. <laughs> the selectman may grant licenses in writing for the obstruction of any part of the highways or, st or streets of the town or for such excavation of the same as may be needful for the purpose of erecting, repairing, altering, removing any building or for laying of drains, waste, gas pipes, or for any other purpose, which to them may seem reasonable. Now, in all reality, that, that covers trenches, too. But the authority is granted with the select. Um, and so uh, just saying, you know, well, maybe that should need to be changed to something simple like the selectman or their appointee. Yeah, you know, I was just going to say their designated appointee it should be because... Mm -hmm. Um, as far as I remember, I, always the highway superintendent has signed off on well, there you know, again, this cutting is, this roads. Is the, this yeah. is playing catch up. Yep. And I knew that was going to be your okay? answer. Oh, I think that's appropriate. I don't think it should be the way it is. What's that? I said, I think what you're suggesting is appropriate. It should say the selectman or the Well, uh, right, because, you know, being, being exactly. a part-time select board, you yep. don't have... Here again, exactly. this was done years ago when you didn't have highway superintendents. This actually comes out of one of the 1934 things. You didn't have full-time highway superintendents. You and you didn't have open meeting laws. Like you didn't we, have open, well, yeah. You uh, did, right. we, can't, we can't make any right. decision unless we have a posted. Right. A lot of stuff was done on a handshake and things like that. Yeah. And they say it, I'm it, not it, saying it's wrong, but I, I feel like it's not doesn't facilitate um, no, good no. business. I'm not here to argue that. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying that that's, yeah. uh, that's the way I read it, too. 
that in this day and age, most any of these authorities, because you have that. Uh, uh, in so, Bruce, are you are you take? Do you want Key us to tell Key that that's what we want, or are you just taking the notes? And I'm just taking notes, and that's what okay. you know. I, you know, I just want to make sure that when it comes before the board, you're not going to question. You know, oh, no, things no, no, like no, that, no. you know, and it's a lot easier to just do it now than just ask a question and get an answer sure. so that when we're, you know, yeah. uh, trying to make recommendations, it's already in there. And rather than saying, you know, having you come back and say, well, we don't want to give up that authority type of situation. Well, I think if there's, if it's questionable, well, I mean, we don't want to remove the authority because no, if no, it's no. questionable, we want to be able to have the authority. But right, right. on and the that, other hand, day to day, if there's no questions, then right, having they, a designated person just to, um, like Kevin or Dick, because for, they, you, um, you right. know, like the beaver removal permits and because stuff. Because that same, same wording goes through on curb cuts, um, trenches. Uh, I, know Dick issues a, I know Dick issues the trench permits because that was a new law that came through. And right. We... Um, you're, you're going to come across where it's the select board or designee, which was we, Dick, we designated Dick. Um, yeah, well, I haven't seen that. Maybe that's yeah. in the minutes somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. But I haven't, you know, there again, I can only go through so much. I'm not going to try to dig it through all the minutes. But it, it, but, it is. You know, but there again, I'm just saying, you know, the, the, yep. the problem is, is there's a lot of things that have changed, but nothing has ever changed in the bylaws. So if somebody's trying to look up the bylaws, they think they're right, and they come in here and they get shot down. It's not right, okay? It's, it's, it's you know, because the bylaws were put there at uh -huh. the will of the people. It was not a policy of the select board, okay? The select board has a right to change the policy, but the bylaw is the will of the town meeting. And so, therefore, you would assume that this is what it is, you know, and so somebody reading this, I want to come in and get a driveway permit, first thing I do is probably call you up and carry, Carol, I need a driveway permit. But well, why waste my time and your time if it's Yeah, I know, not right? normally it's Kevin. You know, it's, it's, uh, so that, that's, all, yeah. that's all it was, yeah. was that. Uh, the other thing is, is this might be a little more for Henry, and probably not, but if you could convey to Jonathan, wait, he's still chair of the planning board? Yes. That you may want to look at uh, chapter 263 and 264, because those are rules and regulations of subdivision of land. But if you go through them, they, there's a lot of conflict with the new planning board bylaws, as well as a lot of the tables they have in this chapter 263 and 4, are the same tables that are in uh, the, planning, uh, the uh, zoning regulations except they are from 2005 and not the most recent one, which I believe are 2013. So 2000, uh, 263 and 264 are of our zoning bylaws? Uh, no, uh, 179 is your uh, zoning right. bylaws. Well, 263 and 64 are supposedly uh, regulations. Town regulations. Uh, no, uh, planning board regulations. But Sub what I'm trying to say is, it, are you talking about Mass General Law guiding the no, planning no, no, board? No, 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 here, chapter okay. two. Okay. In, okay. in the town bylaws. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay, those are supposedly uh, um, uh, subdivision of land planning board yep. regulations. But there's a lot of subdivision stuff in the Chapter 179 zoning bylaw. And so, and a lot of most, I think the newest page in that chapter 263 and 64 is like 2005, some of them older than that. So uh, that needs to be gone through, and I think that would be more in the planning board purview because they have a good committee working on that. Well, you're right, and, and, and to, to that exact point where you speak about having conflicts is uh, uh, chapter 155, our uh, stormwater regulation bylaw. That's it's usually, you know, screwed up because we had uh, in 179 that spoke about, uh, you know, taking care of uh, preventing runoff and drainage, and all these things, erosion control. And then when they took on the stormwater bylaw, that whole bylaw was written independent. And they right. didn't omit anything, they just added it to it. So when you read one part, it tells you to do this. When you read this, it tells you to do this. And, you know, and I've, I've sat on the planning board and had people there, and the board 
doesn't act favorably that way. They, they seem to be able to, and maybe I shouldn't say it like this, but the board goes to what they want to do instead of what the rules are, and I don't like that at all. Well, no, and it's worse than that, because if you go into some of the select board responsibilities, they cover the stormwater, uh, bylaw, uh, stormwater before stormwater bylaw was passed, it's and true. that hasn't been removed. Exactly. Okay, so... You know, so it, it's it's not something that's going to be fixed overnight. It's just that this right. 263 and 64 that come across are, I don't know, 70 or 80 pages that probably 60% are rubbish. Yeah. Okay, because they're, you know, a lot of them were put in as regulations way back when somehow got moved into bylaws and are now part of the bylaws. So, you know, well, so I it's, I, it, I'm throwing it saying yeah. it, it, it's more of a planning board issue than it is. As far as us as a bylaw committee, it's beyond us as, a, as far as a bylaw committee because you people working on the plan for know more, a lot more about that than we do. Well, I'm not sure when, <clears throat> it, but I know that I used to have uh, copies of the bylaws of the town. And then when the website started coming around 2004, 5, or 6, there was somehow the town adopted... Uh, what do, we, what do you want to call it, um, like a blanket format of bylaws? And all, all of a sudden, there's a lot of bylaws that started to appear, you know? And when I looked at some of them, I mean, I think I shared with you that we have a bylaw that says you can't ride a horse on any of the sidewalks in right. town, you know? Right. And, then, and I'm like, when did that? And I looked for it, and I can't find where it ever existed. But I, and there was, yeah. there's some other very strange ones that come along, and there's one that says that you can't ride a horse in the center of town. Well, if you compare that to state law, the state law says not only I can ride my horse in the center of town, but if your car scares my horse, you have to stop your car and cover it. I don't think it says you can't ride the horse. I think you can't ride it on the sidewalks or something like that. Oh, it says you can't ride in the center of the town. Now, I don't know if they I, meant well, by the whatever. common. Yeah, but, I, yeah, I, think, I, I think we're probably both wrong on that. And if I, you know, I could take where, the time I guess, I was wondering, where did it come from? I think, it, it, I think it, with a lot of these bylaws, it was part of this format. And it might have been a very generic thing for any common, any city no, in the Commonwealth. It came from, it came from, in 1934, uh, they threw out every pre-existing bylaw and came up with a new set of bylaws. That was in 1934. Okay. And that's where that started. I see. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of them that, that there's a whole group in, that's, and there's a couple of them are in there, but there's a lot of others in there that originally were adopted in 1934. And that's part and parcel of it trying to go through to find out where they truly were ever adopted in bylaws and whether we still need them at this point in time. Right. You know, and that's why I uh, want to meet with the chief to see with what is actually covered in it would be covered under uh, police department on, in their group because I think some of this, you know, um, um, disobedience and things like that are probably uh, police regulations and or rules that could, so in which case they could be taken out of the uh, bylaws. But, uh, uh, you know, we're getting off on a tangent. I just wanted a couple basics, right. you know, because I, I have never heard of you heard he, the board holding hearings on driveways and everything else is what these bylaws say. I have no, seen no, it, no. and yet, which is in contradictory to the planning board because a planning board does that from what I've seen, what little I've seen. And so it's a contradiction, and then, then you have somebody else, the planning board says the building inspector, I believe, enforces the planning board rules, but yet you have the highway superintendent signing permits too. You know, so. Who's right and who's wrong? Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, well, I know and somebody, you know, a lot of this is going to come to a head sooner or later. I mean, you know, it's a, but, so, we, you know, when you say we're tr trying to match some of the rules, you know, unless we consider they're really bad rules to begin with, but we're trying to uh, match some of the, what is presently going on and try to make some of it more of a living document rather than a permanent document, if that's well, it, a way it, of putting it. it it needs to not be bogged down with contradictory stuff either. Well, that's... And, and like, yeah. like Kip says, it's, it's, it is confusing to people that are looking for stuff. Yeah. And everything's going online, so it'll be so much more accessible. So. Yeah. Well, uh, there again, I, I mean, I, I personally, we haven't got into it on the committee yet, but 
I know I personally have a way they have set it up. I mean, a good example is you got boards and committees try to find council of aging in boards and committees. It's not there. It's like, you know, someplace else. It's uh, all by itself. Aging, council of. You know, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> I, uh, we are going to work on the website. <laughs> well, that's not the website issue. That's the code issue. Yes. You know, that's that's the way the code people set but, up. And there again, we, we, we had a meeting right at the beginning with them. But it should be them. easier. It should be more searchable on the website. The website well, is the problem. Because yeah. yeah. that's how people are going to access it. They're not going to have a hard copy. Hmm. Well, there is, there, is a tab, there is a tab on the website that says town bylaws. Okay. Right. So, and, but it needs to be more or e more easily a searchable. Somehow. Well, you can't. That's about the only easy tab there is. I mean, they, they, there is an index there. Uh, there is a search box. Uh, what the problem is that I find is, is just what I said. You look under boards and committees. Okay, uh, I don't believe planning board is under there. I don't believe personnel board is under there. I know council of aging is under there. They got their own thing. There's like three or four boards and committees under boards and committee. So that's a part and parcel of the, the index problem, which is really not even a code. It's not a bylaw. That's something that somebody, whenever they sat down with the code people to organize it, this is how they came up. And I've looked at a lot of other towns, and I think that it was a matter of the code people probably said that this is best for you, and you think, okay. You know, because so, I've so looked at other, other towns, towns, and a lot of them are laid, this, laid out the same way, and it's like, why? It mm -hmm. makes no sense. but. Yeah, it probably is because that's the way it came as a baby. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, but anyway, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you, Thanks, Bruce. Bruce. Um, you know, I just want to read one notice um, from Barbara. Um, this is the tax collector office is in the final stages of creating um, the tax file. We will be posting, printing, and packaging the bills over the next three or four days. And we'll be mailing the bills by mid to late next week. Um, we appreciate your patience. We understand that many property owners are interested in making a tax payment within this calendar year and are working very hard to get them out as soon as possible. Please give us this next week to focus on finishing up the process. Once the tax bills are ready, they will be posted on our website for immediate payment. You can also check the collector treasurer's page on our website for up-to-date announcements. So, again, it's going to be mid to late week. Um, mailing next week if people are um, just before Christmas in other words a lot of people appreciate that <laughs> well you know there's a lot of income tax and everything else I know so I know and if everyone was working John Cordero was everyone is trying very hard to get this out yeah. um, no, about that. But, yeah. okay but, okay I, I, you may get another call from me on that Okay. It's always Good nice night, to talk to you, Bruce. I appreciate your phone calls. All right. Um, the only other thing, um, the key next week, I mean, for next meeting, um, could you put on the budget for next week? Because we will have the budgets in. I mean, for the 27th. Our next meeting is December 27th. So, um We'll need the budgets on there and an executive session for the marijuana stuff. We need to probably talk about so that. So we're not going to meet next week? So we really don't no. Have much. No. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, so the, and, and then January will be um, the 10th and the 24th. Is that okay with you? It's fine. You, okay. Yep. And, and if we um, need to, we can meet uh, additionally. The idea was to, you know, depending on the budgets. Um, are you going to be adding to the budget books when the information comes in? So, uh, Brenda okay. will bring in the sheets. Okay. Sheets. Yeah, I'd like to. Um, when she gets the, uh, um, they should be here. We should have them anyway for the, we should have them by the 26th because they're due Friday. Mm -hmm. They, she might not get them copied for us by Friday, but okay. she would have them copied for us on Tuesday. But we could, we could come in and get them probably yep. Tuesday or Wednesday. That's fine. Okay? Yep. Very good. All right. Um, if I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. 
Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I second it. I need a second. <laughs> you. Well, I was thanking you. So a second. This was a record. Yeah. <laughs> well, Trevor's not here, so. Oh, don't, no, it's you.